the PLO and Black September organisation. Black September, also known as the Black September organisation, is a breakaway militant faction of the Palestinian organisation Fatah. The group was founded in 1971 to seek retribution on Jordan's military and to assassinate Jordan's King Hussein after they forcefully confronted the Palestinian Liberation Organisation, also known as the PLO, during an attempt to seize power from the monarch in September 1970. A war between the Jordanian Armed Forces and the Palestinian Liberation Organisation was what gave rise to the Black September movement. The Arab-Israeli war seized most of Palestine and 725,000 Palestinians fled to neighbouring countries, especially Jordan. Almost immediately, the displaced Palestinians formed guerrilla groups to take back their homeland. A group that emerged was the Fatah, which gave rise to Black September. The name comes from the attack in Munich on the 5th of September 1972. Eight men from the Black September group infiltrated the Olympic athletes' village, taking nine Israeli athletes hostage. They then murdered these athletes at an airfield when accepting their demands to receive a plane to fly back to Cairo. So now we have my contention statement, which is, did the Black September group achieve their goals of liberating Israel? Which I will discuss over the following information. The key concepts used to justify the actions of this terrorist group's aims and beliefs. The key concept of this terrorist group was a simplistic one. The Fatah and the PLO had the same idea, the absolute destruction of Israel and following this with a free and independent Palestinian state. Their anger towards the Israeli state was how they were forced to live in refugee camps and they felt they were essentially kicked out of their country. They believed they would end the Arab-Israeli war and bring a peaceful and free Palestinian state back to fruition. The key individuals who shaped and influenced this group. Most of the group members were anonymous and the group was led from the Fatah political party. The main key individuals who shaped the entire movement was Jordan's King Hussein, as the main objective of the group was to assassinate him. This influenced many of the campaigns led by the group, as fighting and terrorist attacks were the result of the desire to assassinate Hussein and the war between the JAF and the PLO. The Fatah group leader was known as Yasser Arafat, and he was predominantly in charge of the PLO and led Black September in an attempt to destroy Israel. The range of methods employed by this terrorist group to implement change. The Black September organization employed many different methods and tactics to gain greater recognition for the plight of the Palestinians. Assassinations, hijackings, bombings, capturing embassies and posting letter bombs were, were at the forefront. Their first, known, their first known act was the assassination of Jordan, Jordanian Prime Minister Wasif al Tal in Cairo on the 28th of November 1971. Other attacks include bombing oil storage tanks in the Netherlands in February 1972, May 1972, hijacking a Sabina flight from Brussels, September to October 1972, dozens of letter bombs sent to Israel officials and diplomats, October 1972, hijacking a Lufthansa flight, December 1972, storming Israel embassy in Bangkok, January and March 1973, failed attempts to kill Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, March 1973, storming Saudi Embassy in Sudan, and September 1973, two gunmen fire on a crowd in Athens Airport. The most notable of these was the Munich Massacre at the Olympics when they murdered nine Israeli athletes. These methods were attempted to change Israel and were all targeted at knocking Israel off in an attempt to take over making it a Palestinian state. The impact of the methods used by this terrorist group. The impacts of these methods, especially in the the Munich Massacre, which was viewed by up to 900 million people, was worldwide recognition of the Palestinian people's grievances for freedom. Other than this recognition, the Black September organisation was ultimately a massive failure. The Israeli government was determined to avenge the deaths of their athletes, and the worldwide view on the Palestinian people's position was noticed, but their re reputation and emphatic appeal was completely tarnished after the bloodshed from the Munich Massacre. Their responses from others around the world. The Israeli government's response to the athletes' death was harsh. They launched Operation Wrath of God, which was an operation where any members of the PLO were now targeted by the Israeli Secret Service, agents of Mossad. Israel had finally taken a violent step towards eradicating the Black September opposition. The general worldwide consensus of the group and 
and Palestinians' cause had been irreparably damaged after the attack in Munich. The extent to which the goals were achieved of the group and the consequences for the people involved. The only extent that the group achieved anything was with the massive publicity they got from the Munich massacre. And 18 months after the Munich Games, Arafat was invited to address the the United Nations General Assembly and the PLO was granted observer status. The consequences for the people involved were dire, as Operation Wrath of God resulted in the assassination of anyone who was involved in the PLO Black September group. The operation also sent commandos to southern Lebanon to kill senior members of the PLO in Operation Spring of Youth. Which brings us to my contention, which is, did the Black September group achieve their goals of liberating Israel? The answer is no, as Arafat realised that that terrorism did not bring about their goals and disbanded the Black September organisation and the PLO in 1973. Historian's view on the topic. The Munich massacre's importance in the longer history of terrorism has received significant attention from scholars, as Walter Lecure, a heavyweight in the study of theoretical history of terrorism, declares the Munich massacre was the most spectacular of the massive scale terrorism that began to occur in the Six Day War in 1967. Lequeur comments on the spectacle of the Munich massacre, but in relation to my contention, does not acknowledge the ineffectiveness of such a terrorist attack. Pinstewicz has made reference to a phenomenon throughout the 1960s and 1970s, identified by David Rappaport in the four waves of modern terrorism as the revolutionary wave or third wave of terrorism. Rappaport claims that the Vietnam War had caused social rupture and the effectiveness of the Viet Cong's primitive weapons against the American Goliath stimulated hope in radical organisations across the world that the existing system was vulnerable. Groups such as the Weather Underground, the West German Red Army Faction, RAF, the Italian Red Brigade, the Japanese Red Army and the French Action Directeur were activated. By the late 1960s and early 1970s, however, the Palestinian Liberation Organization became a heroic model for revolutionary activism, replacing the position once held by the Viet Cong. The strength of the PLO motivated the formation of numerous offshoot organizations. Terrorist attacks became more frequent, more violent, and began to transcend national boundaries. The Munich Massacre was the peak of the terrorist trend. Rappaport has observed that after the Munich Massacre. Relative to the contention... The PLO was a group induced by the work of the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War, which sparked hope among guerrilla groups to overthrow the perceived Goliaths. Like the other groups of the time, though, many of them failed to achieve their objectives.